In this video, I'm going to introduce you to what I think is a pretty cool rolling motion example. So imagine a block of wood is placed on a table and a solid blue foam ball is placed on top of the block. Then the block is pulled to the right and the ball rolls without slipping. Which way do you think the ball will roll and do you think it will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Instead of relying on intuition, think about the forces involved and commit to some predictions. In a minute, I'm going to draw the forces and use physics to show you what the ball should do, but I really want you to believe me, so I decided to take some video of a real foam ball sitting on top of a real block of wood, and I even put a real student in the background, although he's actually one of my astronomy students. Then I enlisted the student that asked me this question to pull the board for me, and I took a slow motion video with my iPhone of the whole thing. So as you can see, the ball rolls to the right. Now, lots of people predict that the ball will roll to the left. I even showed this to my seven-year-old daughter, and she pointed out that the ball does move to the left compared to the board. And of course, she's right about that. Here's the motion from above. Use the green line to keep track of the motion of the ball relative to the board, and use the green marker cap to keep track of the motion of the ball relative to the table. Notice that both the board and the ball move forward relative to the table, but the board moves faster, so actually the ball moves backward relative to the board. This view from above also shows the rotation of the ball nicely. There's a little smudge of chalk on the ball right here. Watch that when the movie starts to see which way the ball is rotating. Okay, so from the movie, we can see that the ball moves to the right relative to the table and it rotates counterclockwise. It's possible to make sense of this by thinking about the forces acting on the ball. The forces are mg, the normal force, and the force of static friction. Friction is static because the ball does not slip, and it's to the right because if the ball were to slip, it would slide to the left relative to the board. Now, F net equals MA results in two equations. In the X direction, there's just one force, static friction, so FS is equal to MA. This equation shows that the acceleration has to be in the same direction as the force of static friction. In the y direction, F net equals MA gives that the normal force minus MG is equal to zero, but that equation really won't come into play again for this example. Net torque equals I alpha will tell about the direction of rotation. Picking the center of the ball as the axis of rotation, the only force causing a torque is the frictional force, because MG and the normal force act at the axis of rotation. The frictional force makes the ball want to rotate counterclockwise, so that's the direction of the rotation. Now, one of the follow-up questions you can ask is, how does the acceleration of the block affect the acceleration of the ball? In other words, if my student pulled the block with a much greater acceleration, would the acceleration of the ball also be greater? This is still assuming no slipping, by the way. Let me go ahead and show you a derivation to answer that question. I didn't take any video for this follow-up question, but you could certainly set up and mess around with it on your own if you have a ball and a block of wood or even something like a textbook. So the first thing I want to emphasize is that there are three kinds of acceleration in this problem. The block accelerates to the right relative to the table. The ball accelerates to the right relative to the table. And the ball accelerates to the left relative to the block. A prime here represents the magnitude of the acceleration of the ball relative to the block. And the negative sign emphasizes that the ball is accelerating to the left relative to the block. These three accelerations are all related. I want a relationship between the acceleration of the block and the acceleration of the ball, so I'll need to eliminate A prime. Going back to torque net equals I alpha, replace torque net with R fs. Then replace I with the rotational inertia of a solid sphere, 2 fifths mr squared, and replace alpha by using the rolling condition. Alpha is A prime over R because the ball rolls over the board. After canceling the r's, I have an equation relating the force of static friction to A prime. But F net equals MA also gave me an equation that involved the force of static friction. So putting these two together, I find that the acceleration for the ball relative to the table is equal to 2 fifths the acceleration of the ball relative to the board. Now combining these two equations to eliminate A prime and doing a little algebra yields the relationship between the acceleration of the board and the acceleration of the ball. So the acceleration of the ball is dependent on the acceleration of the board. It's cool to note that this result does not depend on the mass or the radius of the ball, although it does depend on the mass distribution. If the ball had been hollow, the rotational inertia would have been 2 thirds mr squared, which would have resulted in a different ratio. 
One last thought. Note that at no point in this derivation did I replace the force of static friction with mu s fn. I wanted to derive a general relationship for lots of different accelerations, so I can't assume that the ball is on the verge of slipping when it would experience the maximum force of static friction. And that leads me to my other last thought. It would be interesting to think about what would happen if the ball slipped. I'm thinking about the directions of acceleration and rotation, and also whether the acceleration of the ball would still depend on the acceleration of the board. If you go back through and adjust this derivation, you can figure out what happens when the ball slips.